the I think the big thing for yesterday was uh, the two I got I a few few big things. But the first is this ticket sales for the uh, the Arthur Ashe Stadium show. And I think they 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 opened up more tickets like two different times or something. Yeah, they're, they're, they're constantly were doing that. They would open like they didn't open up. The new thing now is that you open up a certain uh, part of the building because the idea is you're going to shoot for TV. And, and they've actually been doing this for, for, for arena shows. WWE does it as well, where the idea is to pack sections and then open up more sections and then try to pack those sections. So it looks like it's full and then you tarp off the rest of the building so it has the feel of a full house rather than people scattered everywhere so you um as opposed to just opening up the whole building like uh you would have done years ago um so they opened up a certain number of tickets on uh the wednesday pre-sale and then they would when when a section would be done then you'd open up another section and then that would be done and you open up another section so that they were doing that throughout the day i mean they're um there's still like 4,000 potential seats left, but there's maybe, you know, 1,500 or 2,000, maybe probably 2,000. There's probably 2,000 that look like they're left, but there's also a couple, you know, like I said, there's probably a couple more thousand that they could open up potentially um, if, if and when those tickets go. But it was, you know, I mean, the first day, I mean, like technically the um, – I mean, I guess if you include the uh, non-ticket sales and everything, it's probably right about the same number as the New Japan and uh, Ring of Honor show did at the Garden right now. Um, but with um, two months left, they'll beat that number. So it will be the um, um, it will be the largest attendance for a non WWE event since whenever WCW started its collapse. So ninety nine. Um, and then as far as for non WWE and WCW, um, I actually have to look that up. I mean, I know the biggest would be the uh, first triple A show at the LA sports arena, which was 16,742. And they'll probably beat that number. Although that, that actually was 17,500 in the building. So it's not a lock. They'll beat that number. So they may be going back to whatever that was. 93, 28 years. Um, if not, I'll look up and see price before that. We're probably talking about, uh, you know, one of the giant regional shows, Superdome or something like that, which they will not beat the the Superdome records or anything like that. They don't have the seats to do it. So um, it's uh, it's super impressive for sure. You know, I mean, it uh, brought out the worst in people as as AEW success always does. Unfortunately, I was gone all day. So I come back and it's just like, oh, my God, it's like the worst of people, you know, just. Um, you know, he should be going like, this is great. And, um, you know, it's like the, the, all of the same stuff over and over again, scalpers, scalpers are part of the, the world. And, um, I mean, the, the all out show had almost, what happened was the all out show in Chicago sold out immediately. And there was almost no scalper activity whatsoever for that show it was very, very low. And then uh, for, especially for a show with that demand, because again, they didn't know. And, and you know what? I mean, they should have known because that I mean, Brian and I were talking about it Wednesday night and, uh, you know, that it was going to sell out instantly and um, people should have figured that out. But they didn't. So when this happened, of course, the next big show, which is Arthur Ashe Stadium, there was scalper activity, not mm -hmm. at a it, it would be at a level from what I gather, still about half of what you would expect for a show at that level, but it was significant as, as opposed to completely insignificant. I mean, like if WWE was going to sell out somewhere with the same number of tickets, there would probably be, you know, generally about twice as many scalpers. But, you know, no one ever says that for whatever reason, um, you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, it's it's just, um, I, I, you know, it's just people who are, um, you know, the <laughs> They were supposed to be out of business in, in the beginning of 2000, 2020. So there you go. So on the flip side, the Madison Square Garden show, which was kind of like playing defense here. Um, are those sales doing OK? Are they low? Like, what's your analysis of those? They're they're not good. Um, 
on Thursday, which was the last I checked, I think it was seventy seven fifty two total, but paid that's like five. Mm-hmm. So that's not good for the garden. Now the ticket prices are much higher at the garden. Um, and that's a WWE decision. And also, and it, and they have to be because it's likely, I don't know what the cost of Arthur Ashe stadium was. I, I am not asked. I know what the cost of the garden is and the garden is very high. And when you're doing TV, you're even, it's way, way high. There's a reason WWE did no TV there for years and years and years. So this was very much going in with the idea of we will lose money on the show, but we got to, um, you know, we're, we're, we're going to lose money on the show, but we've got to head off the opposition. And it, it appears to have failed miserably. So um, that's, you know, um, that's, that's the deal, you know, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't think it was a good idea for them to do it. I 100% thought they were going to do it because that's Vince's mentality. I thought they were going to try to do Raw um, on the Monday before the Wednesday. So that'd been the t- September 20th. I was, I was like certain, and I don't know if they couldn't get that date, but I mean, as soon as W, I mean, um, AEW made that announcement, you know, they were coming in. I was like, okay, raw is going to be in the garden on September 20th. And instead it was SmackDown in the garden, September 10th, which was a date that they could get because, um, there was an, you know, another act that was performing on that day. And for whatever reason they canceled WWE canceled Atlanta and Gainesville yesterday. And I don't know the, reason behind either um hopefully i will find that out in the next day or so um atlanta they had they put tickets on sale on a pre-sale on wednesday or thursday so tickets were already on sale and then friday it was going to go on sale to the general public and they just pulled the whole show Mm -hmm. so that was interesting gainesville they've had tickets on sale for a, a while and they're on a tour of florida so it's not like it's like a weird logistic thing and they just canceled the show too so it's um you know, I mean, there's the the negative from WWE. There's the positive. The they had uh, last night was the first show with fans in the building. They sold out Houston. Uh, Fort Worth will be sold out on Sunday. Uh, Dallas is is okay. I would not call it good by any means for Dallas and Raw, but um, I mean, it's still more tickets than AEW will sell for Wednesday in Garland. But you know, American Airlines Arena downtown Dallas versus you know high school basketball gym in Garland, Texas. You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. there's it's not exactly the same thing either, but, um, you know, the, um, but the, but the whole thing is, is that, um, you know, as, as far as the, uh, um, the ratings went, I mean, they were up, they'll probably be up about 300,000. I mean, we got the prelims and there's, there's they're sometimes not perfect, but they're close. So they'll probably be up about 300,000 viewers and up significantly in 18 to 49, which is the key demo. And with the first show with fans in the building, Raw will probably be up significantly this week for sure. I mean, it will be up significantly. It won't even be probable. And then, um, you know, do they sustain, you know, obviously during the Olympics, they don't sustain, um, and then Raw will be hurt by football, but SmackDown won't. So, um, you know, again, was this a one week, let's look at this? Um, or, I mean, before, the one thing that we've learned during the pandemic is location is so important. Um, when WWE moved to, WWE was dying at the Performance Center. That they AEW would have passed WWE by now. Um, if they stayed in the performance center, they had to get out of there. They did. They went to the Thunderdome. It cost them a lot of money, but it it was ne- it was a necessary cost. Now going on the road, um, it's another jump. Does it sustain? Um, maybe not at this level, but where it falls to, you know, again throughout the Olympic weeks, because that's just you know like throwing you know going against the NBA playoffs. You just you can't fight it. But when you get to normalization, it will probably be lower than last night because that was the first one, but it will probably be higher than they've been doing. So it's going to be an overall. I'm sure it will be an overall plus. Of course, if the product is boring um, and all that, uh, you know, you won't you, you know, you'll fall quicker if the product is OK. You probably won't fall as much if the product's great. You probably won't fall at all. So that's what we got. to That's the deal. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio. We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work. 
working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.